You are being lied to. Throughout history, we've seen countless pivotal moments that have shaped the world we live in today. However, nobody told you the truth behind their genuine motivations. Let me give you an example. Remember when Christopher Columbus set sail across the Atlantic? Sure, the history books say it was to find a new trade route, but what if I told you he was actually on a quest to find his very own American fanboy? And it doesn't stop there. The French Revolution wasn't just about liberty and equality, it was also about finding out whether Louis XIV was secretly a fanboy in disguise. The Austrian painter wasn't rejected from our school, he failed to make the cut at Tomboy University. Oppenheimer didn't build the atomic bomb to help win the war, he built it to impress his big titty Tomboy GF. Even the Cold War had a hidden agenda. It wasn't just about superpower rivalry, it was a fierce battle over whether American fanboys could beat the Soviet tomboys. And Neil Armstrong wasn't just the first man in space, he was the first fanboy in space! Behind every historical discovery, political debate, or war, always lied a singular hidden question. Who's better? Fanboys or tomboys? What the fuck, man? First, let's get on the same page. When I say a fanboy, I mean a person who is a biological male and presents himself as very feminine. That could be by wearing tie-high socks, drinking Monster three times a day, wearing makeup, and having the inner desire to be dominated by masculine men. Think of characters like Astolfo, Felix, Venti, and Link. And when I say tomboy, I mean a girl that lands in the middle of being cool and cute at the same time. Which means her personality, looks and interests are all perfectly balanced. Consider characters like Mikasa, Ryuko or Tomo. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's address the elephant in the room. Is a straight man dating a fanboy considered gay? Complicated. Dr. Lando says it's not fully gay, but definitely not straight. The world is not black and white, human minds work in shades of grey. Or how I like to call it, shades of gay. Meanwhile, Dante said that fanboys are not gay. You're attracted to anything that looks like it can be impregnated. That's why sometimes, if you're like driving down the, the highway and you see very curvy rock formations, you might get an erection just looking at the rocks. Therefore, Seeing anything that even resembles curves and impregnatability may, can turn you on as a dude, right? So that's why liking femboys is like chill. I personally agree with Dante's 100%. You don't date femboys because they're dudes, but because of all the benefits they bring to the table. So don't worry, you won't be the one sucking dick. Unless you want to. Be for Why not date girls instead and avoid all the homosexual allegations? Because girls? are mad! Do you know how men and women generally don't understand each other? We constantly argue, disagree, and fight. Men in marriages are unhappy, and mother dating is a shithole! However, when it comes to fanboys, those problems immediately disappear, since men tend to be a lot better at communicating with each other. And as I mentioned earlier, Fanboys are MEN! They understand what it means to get kicked in the balls! After all, it's a homie that you can rail, and there is absolutely nothing that can beat that. Right? WRONG! Everything that I've said about women not being compatible doesn't apply to tomboys either, for different reasons. They may still be women, however, their coolness overrides their usual annoying female traits. They could be interested in more masculine hobbies such as sports, cars and martial arts, which immediately gives both of you so much more in common, therefore making men and tomboys as compatible as men and fanboys. Well, if both tomboys and fanboys are insanely compatible, th th why not just date a tomboy and avoid all the homosexual allegations? The relationships you form with a fanboy or a tomboy are very different. You and a tomboy are in an infinite loop of masculine energy. You constantly challenge one another to exceed your limits, whether that be by training in the gym, doing martial arts, or whatever your hobbies are. So if you're more of the feisty type, tomboys are for you. Meanwhile, fanboys are usually more tame. You know, they're the ones that wanna match profile pictures and play Omori while listening to horrible hyperpop with you. 
so if you're more of the introverted type, fanboys are for you. On the other hand, tomboys tend to be a lot more convenient. Let's take traveling, for example. You're at an airport three hours before your flight. If you're with a tomboy, you can just place down some bags and just fall asleep on the benches. There won't be any complaining. No, it's uncomfortable. No, I'm hungry. No, I want to explore the shops. Because tomboys are just that hard. However, when you travel with a fanboy, you'll almost certainly encounter these complaints. They'll need makeup, expensive clothes, skincare, and since they're feminine, they probably won't be able to shut the fuck up. However, they are a lot better at emotional support. They'll nurture and take care of you when times get hard. In fact, they might even show you that as a man, you can still take proper care of yourself. You can have a skincare routine that doesn't involve washing your face with ball sack water. You can wear something other than a hoodie and skinny jeans. You can subscribe and help me get to 30,000 subscribers, please, thank you so much. Furthermore, fanboys can peg you without additional equipment and can get pregnant. Meanwhile, tomboys can also be immune to impregnation too, but only if they tolerate the second home. Fanboys, on the other hand, have no choice. There's also a high probability that a tomboy's father will want to beat the shit out of you. Assuming you're an average gaffer viewer, which means you're a loser. You'll be fine with a fanboy's father though, since he's not present in the household. And fanboys don't need special toilets. You can pee together while holding hands. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> There's also another major difference between the two. Fanboys are sexy, tomboys are hot. Let me explain. Fanboys are sexy because they appeal to the traditional standards of female beauty. You know, dresses, tie highs. They're babes. Fanboys are dudes that look like babes. Meanwhile, tomboys are hot because of their general physique, like the abs and quads, which are not traditionally beautiful, but still pretty goddamn hot. You see what I'm trying to say? Now it's up to you what you prefer. I personally still lean more toward the tomboy side. Listen, the thought of my head getting crushed like a watermelon wins me over every time. They also have boobs. Fanboys don't have boobs. And I like boobs. Okay, I get it, I get it. Fanboys like tomboys are pretty great. But where can I find you on? Thank you for asking. In terms of location, fanboys and tomboys can be found everywhere. However, if you want higher spawn rates, for tomboys, good places would be underground fights, bodybuilding competitions, rugby matches, and any gym, except for Planet Fitness. And for fanboys, check out ballet shows, LGBTQ parades, only Planet Fitness, and Slovenia. I would know, it's my homeland. These places should be on your priority list. However, in my research, I've stumbled upon a foolproof method with a 100% spawn rate for encountering both fanboys and tomboys. The way to do that is by going to a generally crowded space and setting up a trap. For fanboys, grab a pink monster energy drink, some estrogen pills, a white skirt and an undertale copy with a box on top of it like this. And for tomboys, two dumbbells, creatine, go-kart tickets and this pre-workout will do just fine. Now wait patiently. It won't be long before one of them appears. But be cautious when you capture them. Fanboys can go pretty feral when feeling endangered. Meanwhile, tomboys will probably just beat the shit out of you. So if you trapped a fanboy, I'd say this. Whoa, hey, somebody set up this trap to catch a fanboy, huh? <laughs> what a dick. Wanna let me peg you? And for the tomboys say, Whoa, hey, somebody set up this trap to catch a tomboy. <laughs> what a dick. Wanna beg me? And there you have it. I have now listed every single positive and negative trait of both dating fanboys and tomboys. But before I reveal the winner of today's video, I feel like it's fair we get some genuinely professional opinions on this matter. So I scheduled two experts in their field to do a professional debate. Hey, I am Mike Bobagar. I have been studying tombology for the past 12 years. I graduated from Tombo University and I'm ready to destroy my opponent in this debate. Hey, my name is Dr. Sugma and I am a fanboy expert. I have been certified professor at Twin College for 9 years now. I am fanboys are my passion and I will eat my tomboy loving opponent for breakfast. Alright, may the debate begin. Fanboys are better.
Alright, I think that debate went pretty well. Now with all the information at hand, I think it's finally time to reveal the objective truth and answer this forsaken question. How about you become a fanboy and date a DOMBOY! Wolfgang Gangnam Style!